video we discussed how to load a flat file to a sql server in this video we're going to talk about how to use databricks to load the data from the sql server to a microsoft azure data lake in order to do that the first step is you would need to do a db link mount which is the databricks file system link mount what happens is in the databricks you would create a mount point and that mount point is going to refer to Microsoft Azure data lake folder. Now, in order to do the mount point, you need to create a user which will have access to go and write or read the file from Microsoft Azure data lake. So now I'm going to show you how to configure a DBFS link mount so that you can connect read and write files from Microsoft Azure Data Lake. The first step is go to Azure Active Directory and then click on Application Registrations. Here, you would need to click on New Application Registration. Please note that I'm creating this application so that the Databricks can access the Azure Data Lake. Here, just say dbricks app for data lake. So I would say dbricks app dl, which is that data lake. And then you can put any URL because obviously I'm not going to sign on. So I just going to say HTTP localhost. It's not going to matter. Just put whatever you want. And then click on create so you have registered the app get the application ID this is important I'll let let you in the next set of videos but click on copy and paste it in a notepad next step is click on the settings click on keys and then create a new key Dbricks key duration never expires and then click on save as soon as you say save there will be a value generated just copy paste the value so copy this value and paste it so that first one is the application id and the next is the key next we have to get the directory id now please note that the directory id would be different for different people so i'm not going to show you directory id but i'll show you where to get it so here is the directory id and just copy the directory the directory id is normally in your uh, is, is in your azure active directory uh, go to properties and you would see directory id over here and then uh, you would copy this and paste it as well in the notepad. So I repeat the steps. Till now what you have done is created a, an app and then created keys. Next, you went and get the directory ID. So these three important parameters are required. Next step, I'm going to create a user for IAM role, which is access manager role. And then I'm going to show you how to create it. So click on all services and go to subscriptions, or you can find subscriptions here. Okay, click on subscriptions and click on this subscription in here. Click on access control and then click on add. Then click click on role owner, KG Azure user group, and then select this Dbricks app. Remember the application which you have registered earlier? This is where you have to select this one and click on save. And you would see that the DB storage app would be available in this IAM control. So 
what you have done is you have created an app registered an app under azure active directory and then you have given the permissions for that app in iam repeat you created an app and all you have to do is give that app the permission the db links it's here um, so dbricks app which you have given permissions as an owner so dbricks app dl is the app which you created and gave it the permissions of the owner so this is the basic setting which you would do to get all set up now what you would do is mount so create a directory in the data lake so let me show you how to create a directory in a data lake go to data lake click on data explorer please note that the to create data lake and steps involving around data, creating folders are available in the previous videos on the same channel search on azure data lake do it yourself so i'm going to create a new folder here i would say dbrix or i would say uh, data bricks mount mount data bricks is my folder name click on ok and you would see mount data bricks available and if you click on it there would not be any items obviously we have just created the folder there is nothing on it now what we are going to do is run few commands to connect the folder to the data bricks so let's see that so create a new notebook and then say configure data lake okay or i would say configure data lake mount now click on create here you would write a few set of commands so first of all you would create a mount folder so mnt is by default it's there in every data bricks so dbutils fs mkdrs this is the command data, data bricks utils dot file system dot make directory and mount so mount is basically your mnt and then you can give any folder name so it, it doesn't have to be really the data lake folder name here i can say mount data lake doesn't matter all right then run this so there is a folder created known as the mount data lake so dbutils fs.makeirs mount data lake is the name of the folder which is created now you would need to do some configs please note that this command or this config is available in the description section of the video below now what you would do is you would copy the application id over here and then copy the password over here and then put in your directory id here i'm not going to show you my directory id but just put in your directory id remember the directory id you copied from the azure uh, back directory properties so put in here and then run this config and finally put your data lake link here which is isp data dot azure data lake dot net and the folder remember the folder which we created earlier which is mount data bricks so i repeat mount data bricks is the folder created in the data lake and it is then mounted as mount data lake in the data bricks so data bricks remember the point presentation so you need to create that link the link is going to be referring a folder over in here so please note that all right now let's run this so i'm going to change it to directory and i'm going to run it so please note that i changed this your directory id to the actual directory id and ran it and it created true that means 
I have a mount point which is now mnt slash mount data lake. Now let's go back. So in the next video, I'm going to quickly show you how to read it from the SQL Server and populate it on the data lake. Thank you for watching.